I would like to introduce my colleague, Chris Pierce. Um, it's a little challenging to introduce Chris because she's practically an institution unto herself. And I know that many of you know Chris and have worked with Chris. Um, so she has been with the National Center off and on for a very long time. And she has been around for many of our firsts, including the first res, right Chris? Yeah, um, Chris uh, also is a certified procurement professional, a CPP, and she is a graduate of Niagara University. The other thing I wanna tell you about Chris is that um, I love hearing about her from my clients because I tell you, if somebody starts a sentence with, I was speaking with Chris Pierce, I know what's coming next. <laughs> and what's coming next is, she's amazing. It was so helpful. Um, so I, I really appreciate that. Now, I, I can't tell you anything about karaoke. We, we've never we've never done that, so I don't know if she loves it or hates it. But I do know that she's very good and just an amazing resource. So I'm gonna turn it over to you, Chris. Here's your clicker. To press pretty hard on that button. Okay. You do not want to hear me do karaoke. <laughs> I was a drummer. I beat things. Um, it did not help me to learn how to carry a tune. But I know how to beat things. All right. And so uh, I welcome you to Native Edge Institute here in Virginia. This is our first time down in Southwest, in Southeast Virginia. So I'm glad to see all the tribes here. Um, it was nice, usually we're up in DC, so it's nice to be down here. Um, this is what, who we were. We're being rebranded and we're re being rebranded by the Department of Defense. And uh, so we're in the process. A lot of my slides say PTAC. We're trying to catch up with Apex Accelerator. Apex is not an acronym. It's just the word Apex. Somebody said, oh, you're an Apexer. I would rather be an accelerator. <laughs> <laughs> and so actually, what I'm gonna do today is tell you how to put your foot on the gas using an apex accelerator. Uh, I just said that. Our goal is to make you successful in government contracting. Your success is our success. I'd be singing in the shower if it wasn't for you. We work with Native American-owned firms. There are, seven uh, there are seven of us who are funded by DOD to work with Native Americans exclusively. We have an online application and we will ask you for your tribal ID or a letter from your tribe saying you are a tribal enterprise because we have to document we're actually working with Native Americans. You have to own 51% of the company, and you have to be a for-profit company. And uh, we get called all the time uh, about tribes working with their economic development uh, departments or commissions, um, how to start. Now, the National Center does that. It does that work. But the Apex Accelerator is strictly government contracting. We, uh, among the seven Apex Accelerators, um, are very large. We're also, we've been with the program from the very beginning. Apex, the, what is now Apex Accelerators were created um, through a National Defense Authorization Act in 1985. The first contracts were 1986. The National Center was among the first, and I was there. <laughs> we cover 33 states and the natives within those states. 
Um, this is how we're broken up. We're 100% of three. The fact that we're organized by BIA regions has, there's absolutely no relationship between DOD and BIA. It was simply, we were already organized that way. Okay, we'll keep the organization. So that's, we are organized by BIA regions, but only, only because we were already organized that way as a people. What we do for Native businesses, and we're really going to get into this deeply, we can determine what, if what you're doing is suitable to government contracting. We're going to find opportunities. One of our most basic services is an online bid match service. We pay the subscription on your behalf. It's free. Every business day, you get an email with bid matches. For some reason, contracting officers aren't uploading opportunities on Saturday and Sunday, so it is only business days. Um, and we also help you with all the registrations and certifications. In fact, certifications is kind of my bailiwick. I've been doing A Day, and HubZone came in 1986. Women owned took 20 years to get, <laughs> and service disabled uh, vendors, uh, service disabled veteran owned is the latest certification, which is now used to be a verification through the VA is now a certification with SBA. We also unite businesses with decision makers. You've heard already today about Res and the big matchmakers that we do at Res. We actually put on once a year with the Department of Interior and Health and Human Services, a by Indian matchmaker. So for those of you who are federally recognized, um, or either American Indian or Alaska Native, because the by Indian Act was that if you are served by our agencies, you should receive the business. And so that's where the by Indian Act is. Also, um, for the veterans, there's a, an act of Congress called Vet First, which says we serve vets, we should contract with vets. Uh, we sponsor events like this with our host um, or separately. Uh, we participate in all kinds of networking events. Uh, there's another Native Edge Institute coming up in New York City. And also for those of you who might like to go to Connecticut, uh, there is a big, um, it's hosted by the Department of Defense Northeast Regional Council, a big matchmaker up there. Uh, and these are the government agencies and primes that are in New York and New England. So if you're looking at that market area, that might be a good event to go to in order to go face to face. It's on August 10th. And um, if you're interested, just email me and I'll send you the uh, information. And we, whether it's in training or in one-on-one -on -one technical assistance, we inform and educate. What do we do for the government and industry on your behalf? We educate them. You just heard Mr. Wright say education is, a p is part of it. We educate them constantly. The DOD has regional councils all over the country. You happen to be in the Mid-Atlantic Regional Council, um, and which again is the DOD agencies and the prime con DOD prime contractors. Uh, we sponsor events that they participate in. We had Mr. Wright here. Uh, we maintain a listing of Native American businesses. We often will get a call from an agency or a prime contractor who will say, I need a Native American with this NAICS code maybe a key word or two about their specific needs. We'll go and look at our client list, who matches the profile. I will admit, if I can't find anybody on the client list, I'll start looking for you 
and encouraging you to become a client. And we match them up. We match them up. And we work directly with the government, which includes tribes. We help tribes get contractors. Or we help contractors who are going to do business on a reservation get registered with a tribe if they're a tribal employment rights tribe. Or if, like Navajo, they have their own system. And as you saw earlier, we have the Navajo region. So the subject matter expert on doing business with Navajo is my colleague, Mabel Totsi. And, uh, but we work with them to identify specific businesses for them to do business with. We're located, our main office is in, with Lockheed in Marietta, Georgia. Navajo Nation uh, spot, uh, hosts one office, Indian Pueblo Cultural Center. Uh, one of our clients, actually, Iron Woman Construction, uh, gives us the office. I'm in Lockheed Martin with Liverpool. And uh, the Tunica Biloxi tribe also hosts one of our offices. This is our staff. Our program manager is George Williams. A lot of people know George from Georgia. Um, he also is housed with our senior office manager. Uh, Mabel, of course, is Navajo. Uh, Adolfo Vasquez is uh, New Mexico. Stan Sams is Colorado. I'm New York. Uh, and, Jean, and Chris Johnson is down in Louisiana. We also, as I indicated, we have subject matter experts. Mabel knows the Navajo Nation better than I ever will. She is fluent in English and Navajo. Uh, also, she formerly worked with the General Services Administration. She knows Sam intimately. <laughs> she also does our, our GSA multiple award contracts. She has that expertise. Adolfo, 20 years Army contracting officer, retired lieutenant colonel. You want to know what a contracting officer can and cannot do? He's the guy to talk to. Stan Sams is uh, relatively new. Um, I, I basically do it all. <laughs> but actually, my subject matter expertise is tribal enterprises. I've been working with tribal enterprises since 1984. Uh, so anything tribal. Um, uh, as I said, Mabel is Navajo, a world unto itself, but I, I've uh, been working with, with tribal enterprises for a lot of years, and that's my expertise along with, like I said before, I do certifications. And, and that means state and local. And like I said, and, and some tribes have some requirements. Uh, so we do, and Chris Johnson, the man knows the Coast Guard. He's, he's down in Louisiana. He knows the U.S. Coast Guard. He's also our FEMA subject matter expert. For some reason, we in New York do not get the hurricanes that Louisiana does. <laughs> this is our contact information if you want to do our headquarters. Uh, this is our general, I'll have my contact information because um, we're all out in the field. Uh, if you're not Native American, uh, you can go to this uh, website. This is our professional association, the Association of Procurement Technical Assistance Center. We're in the process of figuring out what to call ourselves in the future. It's okay, we started a, when this program started, we were Government Marketing Assistance Centers, AMAX. GMAX, whatever we were. So this is not the first change I've been through. Now, I want to apologize up front. If you're really knowledgeable, you've been in government contracting for years, uh, you might get bored with this. But basically, what I want to do is, is to, you know, how do you know when you're ready? What training and technical assistance is available? How do I develop a plan of action? 
Um, and then how do I grow as a contractor and subcontractor? And with that regard, everybody who's currently my client, if you would raise your hand. Now you know who to talk to about whether or not I'm good or not. <laughs> First is a self-assessment. You know, it, to determine whether or not you're ready for government contract is a self-assessment. And this is something I can help you with. We're just thinking about getting into government contracting. That's okay. I'll talk to you about it. You know, are you an established business? Especially the 8A program, they want you to have two years of experience. Is your, con is your company financially stable? Unlike the commercial world, you usually have to carry a government contract to completion to get paid. Sometimes there are intermen, you know, where you report quarterly and get paid quarterly. You got to carry them contracts. And that means having the financial responsibility for your employees, for your subs, uh, suppliers. Does the government buy your product or service? The government buys everything. But if you're an electrical contractor in a, in, and only wants to work in five rural counties and there's no federal footprint, then we better be talking state and local. <laughs> and especially if there's no, you know, and then there's no tribe in those five counties. So it's, you know, what do you see as your market? Now, of course, a lot of people say, oh, I'll go anywhere in the world. Do you know how to work Oconus? It's a scary world out there. Um, so you really have to have a sense of where you want to work and does the government buy what you're selling there? Um, does your overall business plan include government mark government marketing and government contracting. You should have an overall business plan. Yes, Lockheed Martin exists quite well on government contracting only. But that's a unicorn. Most everybody else has to have a commercial market. A Boeing has a commercial market as well as a government market. So you need to have an overall business plan, which part of that will be your marketing plan. And again, will your company's cash flow will be compatible with the government? I hit finances twice. Believe me, you don't want to come up short on a government contract and not be able to perform. You've heard several people say the contracting community is quite small. <laughs> they know each other. They talk to each other. So what are the basic steps to success? And of course, I'm selling my organization and the services. But the Apex Accelerators, we were created to help you. We're given resources to assist you. So. These are your tax dollars at work. So make your tax dollars work for you. And again, same, you know, going through the same questions we talked about. But the key is a plan of action, having a plan of action. I'm not saying something set in stone. You can change your mind or something will come up that'll say, oh, wait a minute, here's an opportunity. Like in the middle of COVID. Where do I get business now? The bases are closed. So we do, you want, your plan of action is gonna include an initial assessment. Now I'm talking from the perspective of an established business. If you're a startup um, that's thinking about, you know, 
in the long run there's going to be government contracting. Um, the National Center uh, can assist you, uh, not the Apex Accelerator, but the, our host, the National Center for American Indian Enterprise Development. When it comes to government contracting, you heard John talk about this, the North American Industry Classification System, which, play, which replaced the Standard Industrial Code, Federal Supply Codes, Product Service Codes. Every federal solicitation is signed a NAICS code and a product service code or a federal supply code. So when you're trying to match something with SAM, those are the two codes that you're going to use. And um, also look at prime contracting opportunities and subcontracting opportunities. Subcontracting is a great place to start. I can tell you right now, a lot of primes will t have told me, oh, the best way to get our company as a mentor is to be our subcontractor so that we've learned about you, we've worked with you, we've gained some confidence in you, so we'll do a mentor-protege with you, we'll do a joint venture with you, we'll do subcontracting opportunities under the Indian Incentive Program. So um, you want to conduct market research on those opportunities that are out there. Of course, the registration pro process, we're talking the system for award management, tax identification number, and then as a result of SAM registration, you're going to get a unique entity identifier. Duns ended April 5th of 2022. It's now UEI. CAGE is still You'll still get that as part of SAM registration, but uh, that is actually the Department of Defense because they keep track of everybody. And then eligibility. You heard from John. Everything in the simplified acquisition area, that's $10,000 to $250,000, automatically set aside to small business. And then small disadvantaged business is a self-certification, but you're going to find out that most people want you to have 8A. <laughs> They're the only certified small disadvantaged businesses. So they'll usually want to know if you're an 8A or if you've been an 8A. If, if, uh, if all else was the same, would you still qualify? Hub zone. Now for tribes, you should be looking at 8A. If you have tribal lands in trust, then look for hub zone. Tribal lands are always hub zone. If you're off any business that's off reservation, June 1st, July 1st, next week, we get the new hub zone maps. You may or may not be eligible anymore. So next week, you want to, if you're off res, you're going to want to check, and your hub zone, you're going to want to check and make sure uh, that you're still located in a hub zone. Um, then the woman-owned and economic development an economic woman-owned uh, small business, and the veteran-owned small business, and small disadvantaged veteran-owned small business. These are all now SBA certifications. The bid match surface, also my clients know I, I keep an eye on all sm small business opportunities, because I want to give everybody a heads up to make sure they pursue the set-asides. And we continue to inform and educate, uh, you know, on the ap application process for the small business programs. Now, for those of you who are either tribal enterprises or thinking about starting at tribal enterprises, um, the 8A, there, there are some unique things about the 8A 
application process for tribes. Um, and that, again, is in my subject matter expertise. Um, we help you with marketing to the prime contractors, you know, getting your capability statement, getting, you know, John talked to you about the dynamic small business search and your SBA profile. That's your first capability statement. And it's the first capability statement that government agencies and prime contractors looking for eligible small businesses is going to see. And, um, and then, of course, the FAR. My clients know how I love the FAR. Um, we are not attorneys. We can't give you opinions. Again, we can only inform and educate you about the FAR, the DFARs. And those of you that are looking for by Indian, the Department of Interior Acquisition Regulations, DIER, the HHSAR, Health and Human Services Acquisition Regulations, which is the only place you're going to find the by Indian Act. And cybersecurity compliance. You cannot get a contract with the Department of Defense or its prime contractors now without having your rating, your cybersecurity rating. This is not CMMC, we're not there yet, but you have to have your self-assessment rating in the Supplier Performance Risk System, what they call SPURS, and the Apex Accelerators were part of the Department of Defense. We're funded in part by them. So, of course, they expect us to help you get on SPURS. Um, and then, of course, eventually it'll be CMMC. I'm not quite sure when we're going to get CMMC. We're on version 2 that was related to NIST Special Publications 800-171, revision 2, well, the draft revision 3 just came out. So we're probably looking at CMMC 3.0. So you want to integrate your plan of action into your public sector marketing plan. Here's what I'm going to do federal. Here's what I'm going to do state, if that's your choice. It's your plan. It's your business, not mine. It's your business. It's your marketing plan. What I can do is support your efforts. I can support your efforts. And then you're going to want to integrate that public sector marketing plan into your general marketing plan for your business. And as I say, there are businesses that can be exclusively federal. Um, but it's a, you know, it's a little tougher. And um, I will say that COVID was the first time I saw both the commercial <laughs> and the public market disappear. Um, and you're going to want to put something in writing. And the reason you're going to want to put it in writing is because that's going to inform your capability statements. That's going to inform your elevator speech. That's going to inform your briefings. It's also going to give you the Bible that will help you tailor all of those for particular customers. And the executive sex, uh, summary should be written last, and it's a, a general overview of the rest. What are my products and services? One of the hardest things <laughs> for me as a counselor is to find out, well, I can sell them anything. <laughs> They're looking for your expertise, not just anything. They're looking for your expertise in a particular product or service. What are you focused on? What is your expertise? Now, a marketing plan should never be, again, cut in stone. Because an opportunity may present itself 
and you say, oh, 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 okay, yeah, yeah, you know. The agency says, you know, well, I like that you're tribal. I like that you're 8A, but I wish you were hub zone because that's the goal I'm not making. Could you be a hub zone? And of course, the first call is, Chris, can I be hub zone? <laughs> okay, here's the process. And, um, and then, then it was like, oh, uh, by the way, now that you've submitted your hub zone plan, could we talk about inching your product area or service area a little over toward what we need? So I'm not saying cast in stone, but it'll inform everything else you do. And, and believe me, the agency wasn't asking them to move much off the mark. They saw what they were capable of and could see where they could expand on it. No, oh, excuse me. Know your target customers. Again, how big a territory are you willing to cover? What agencies are there? Is it a federal market? Is it a state market? A lot of your members for the tribes, a lot of your members, when they go into business, the tribe is the first government they want to do business with. So it helps if the tribe is ready <laughs> with a purchasing program and a plan. A little outside of our scope, but uh, you might want to think about that too because that supports your local economy. Um, but it, I had a client was in, well, she was in the 8A program when I got her. She was two years into the program. She hadn't had a contract yet. We looked at her market, and there was no federal agency. There was no federal prime. Um, you know, and I said, you, you need to think about expanding your market area. And here's some ideas you know, that are just a little beyond what you consider your market. The unique selling prop proposition and competitive analysis. Now, a lot of contractor, a lot of contracting officers, a lot of buyers will, you know, ask you about your socioeconomic status, but what they really want to know is, what can you do for me? You need to match your pro selling proposition to that. Pricing and sales volume. I will be honest, the best source of information about pricing and sales volume potential is actually a small business development center because they uh, have very intense general business uh, assistance and training on sales strategies and all the different ways you can develop a sales strategy. We're generally looking at one solicitation, one, <laughs> one agency. Um, so it, when you're looking at your pricing and sales, it, it should probably be something you start with the S, SBDC. And then a location, I've talked about that enough. Location, everything's location, location, location. And here's something my clients hear about is, well, you got one piece of business out of that agency? Okay, let's go for two. You don't, you don't want to just go through Sam and, oh, here's, go shoot for this, shoot for that. Shoot. No, you got one out of Indian Health Services. Let's look at two. Let's look at three. You know, you've got your foot in the door, now how do you shove the rest of your leg in? The other thing is financial projections. And again, we're talking, you know, we talked about it during uh, the capital, access to capital. Really understanding your, your financial situation and, you know, what kind of income you need to support the business you have and who's going to give you that income. I will be honest with you. In recent years, because of the strengthening of the Buy Indian Act for the federally recognized tribes, Alaska Native communities, and um, 
the Buy Indian Act, Department of Interior, um, Health and Human Services is really where people break into government contracting. Because it's a set, it's, first of all, it's right now it's a, a self-certified, um, there's a form, and you submit your certification with each set, of, you know, when you respond to a set-aside solicitation. Um, so you need to be thinking of your, your financial projections and your goal setting and, and how government contracting is going to fit into that. Commercial, there's probably bigger money opportunities there, but it's like totally unregulated kind of thing. You know, they do their own thing. Um, where the government is a little more challenging and, but it's, they always pay. Unless there's a good reason not to, and they always pay. Now, uh, you're gonna get the, the um, my slides, but these are all the other resources that you can use in developing your government contracting. The Apex Accelerators, Small Business Development Centers, I've already talked to them. SBA has its Office of Government Contracting, so of course the SBDCs support that effort. Uh, SBA also funds Women's Business Centers. Um, Veterans Business Outreach Centers. Uh, the Service Corps of Retired Executives. Um, a lot of my clients don't know about SCORE, but for your initial mentor, there can be some really, really good uh, people with industry experience. Uh, the Minority Business Development Agency funds business centers like Jess. Now for those of you who are manufacturers and want business development support, including cybersecurity, the Manufacturing Extension Partnership, one in every state. And then for those of you in North Carolina, you have a state-funded program, the North Carolina Military Business Center, great resource. They're state-funded, they're specific to North Carolina, uh, but they want to keep those defense dollars in the state, so they do a lot of support work. So any, any questions? Well, what I'm gonna recommend, well, I know all my clients are gonna call me next week. Monday and Tuesday, I'm not in. <laughs> but uh, for those of you who aren't my clients, please gather my business cards and please consider becoming a client. I would love to work with you. And your success is my success, and I want to be successful.